Hello, hope you are doing well. Today I am going to take up a story from NCERT's English textbook for class 10. The name of the textbook is First Flight and the name of the story is Madam Rides the Bus. We had discussed part 1 of the story in our previous session. Part 1 of the story introduces us to Wally. Wally is a young girl. She's just 8 years old and her favorite pastime was stand on her doorway and look at people in the street. She was really fascinated by the bus that used to come to her village. And day after day, looking at the bus, she had a strong desire to ride that bus. She would talk to people, ask some discreet questions. Maybe in her heart of hearts, she was planning a trip. Let us see what happens in part 2. Please open your books on page 119 and I am going to discuss part 2 with you. Well, one fine spring day, the afternoon bus was just on the point of leaving the village and turning into the main highway when a small voice was heard shouting, stop the bus, stop the bus and a tiny hand was raised commandingly. The bus slowed down to a crawl and the conductor sticking his head out of the door said, hurry then, tell whoever it is to come. Quickly, it's me, shouted Wally. I am the one who has to get on. By now, the bus had come to a stop and the conductor said, Oh, really? You don't say so? Yes, I simply have to go to town, said Wally, still standing outside the bus. And here is my money. She showed him some coins. Okay, okay. But first you must get on the bus, said the conductor and he stretched out a hand to help her up. Never mind, she said, I can get on by myself. She didn't want the conductor to help her. She was a little scared. But you know, in a very commanding voice, she, you know, asked the bus to stop. The conductor was confused for a moment. She said she has to go to the town. Yes, maybe. He wanted to help her. She said, no, I will get on by myself. You don't have to help me, she said. The conductor was a jolly sort, a happy-go-lucky fellow, fond of joking. Oh, please don't be angry with me, my fine madam. So now he has started calling her madam. He said so. Here. Have a seat right up there in front. Everybody move aside please. Make way for madam. So now he is really you know making fun of her. It was the slack time of day and there were only 6 or 7 passengers on the bus. So the bus was not overcrowded and Wally would get a seat of her choice. They were all looking at Wally. Naturally if any child gets onto the bus all by her herself anybody would look at that and maybe they would be worried at her adventure but we are thinking like that it's not written in the story but you know when we are reading a story we always go beyond it our imagination is also ignited along with the story writer and that is the power of the story and that is the power of the story writer because we have started imagining the whole scene is clear in front of our eyes, isn't it? I hope you are also enjoying the bus ride with Wally. Let's see how the ride goes. And the conductor was laughing. Wally was overcome with shyness. Now naturally, a young child, she was very shy. Avoiding everyone's eyes, she walked quickly to an empty seat and sat down. May we start now, madam? Now he's asking her permission. The conductor asked her very smilingly. Then he blew the whistle twice and the bus moved forward with a roar. Now look at these words. 
blew his whistle twice. So, that means this is an indication for the driver that if it, that if it is twice he will move forward. It was a new bus, its outside was painted with a gleaming white and it had green stripes along the sides. Inside the overhead bus shone like silver directly in front of Wally. So, what a treat for Wally, she, ha she has got into a brand new bus, I am happy for Wally, are you? Let us see how is her bus ride. So, above the windshield there was a beautiful clock, the seats were soft and luxurious, Wally devoured everything with her eyes. Now, the word devoured, generally this word is used you know uh, for food devoured, but here the author has used the word for eyes. You know now she was you know enjoying the scenery, the bus, everything which she had not experienced earlier through her eyes. But when she started to look outside, she found her view cut off by a canvas blind that covered the lower part of her window. She could not see, so she stood up on the seat and peered over the blind. The bus was now going along the bank of a canal, what a beautiful scene. The road was very narrow, on one side there was the canal and beyond it palm trees, grassland, distant mountains and the blue, blue sky, beautiful picture is not it? It looks as if the writer is describing a painting in front of eyes. Let us read further. On the other side was a deep ditch and then acres and acres of green fields, green, green, green as far as the eye could see. Oh, it was all so wonderful. Suddenly she was startled by a voice, listen child said the voice, you should not stand like that, sit down. Sitting down she looked to see who had spoken. It was an elderly man who had honestly been concerned for her, but she was annoyed by his attention. She did not want anyone to meddle with her or tell her anything. No, that old man was concerned about her, but she did not like. There is nobody here who is a child she said. See, she is pretending to be a grown up person and the scenery that has been described by the writer is beautiful. Today also, if we go in a bus or in a train, we can see such scenes. So, if you have to describe a train journey or a bus journey, you can use those descriptions. Read it again, underline them and when it comes to writing, you may use them and that is how we connect reading and writing. We learn a lot when we read and we can use it while we are writing. So, we have come to know that Wally was pretending to be a grown up person. The conductor chimed in, oh sir, but this is a very grown up madam. Do you think a mere girl could pay her own fare and travel to the city all alone? Wally shot an angry glance at the conductor and said, I am not a madam please remember and you have not yet given me my ticket, I will remember. The conductor was mimicking her tone, everyone laughed and gradually Wally too joined in the laughter. You see Wally had a great presence of mind. She had given her fare, but the conductor had not yet given her the ticket and she knew that. So, you know she reminded him of that. The conductor punched a ticket and handed it to her. Just sit back and make yourself comfortable. Why should you stand when you have paid for a seat? Once again he is making fun of her, because I want to she answered standing up again, but if you stand on the seat you may fall and hurt yourself when the bus makes a sharp 
turn or hits a bump. That's why we want you to sit down, child. Wally said, I am not a child, I tell you. She said irritably, I am eight years old. Of course, of course, how stupid of me, eight years. The bus stopped, some new passengers got on and the conductor got busy for a time. Afraid of losing her seat, Wally firmly sat down. An elderly woman came and sat beside her. Are you all alone, dear? She asked Wally. As the bus started again, Wally found the woman absolutely repulsive. Why? Because she has asked her a question, are you all alone? Wally didn't want anyone to ask her that question. Because you know that was making her conscious that she was traveling alone. Maybe, you know, she was a little scared, but she didn't want to show it to anyone. And there were other things also. She had big holes in her ears. She, her, you know, ear lobes were very big and she was wearing ugly earrings and she could smell the beetle nut. The woman was chewing and see the beetle juice that was threatening to spill over her lips at any moment. Ugh, who would be sociable with such a person? Yes, I am traveling alone, she answered curtly. And I have a ticket too. Yes, she is on her way to town, said the conductor. With a 30 pies ticket. Oh, why don't you mind your own business, said Wally. See, Wally is now getting angry. She has scolded the conductor. But she laughed all the same. And the conductor laughed too. But the old woman went on with her drivel. Is it proper for such a young person to travel alone? Do you know exactly where you are going in town? What is the street? What is the house number? You need not bother about me. I can take care of myself, Wally said. You see, the questions that old woman was asking were well-meaning because the woman was genuinely worried about Wally. But Wally, once again, very rudely, told her, you don't have to worry about me. And then she turned her face towards the window and started looking out. This is our part two. And there is comprehension check. The question for you is, do you think it is advisable to go out of the house all alone? Give reasons for your answer. What advice would you like to give to children? Young children, okay, it is not advisable, we all know. But what advice would you like to give to young children? You have, you know, younger brother or sister. You have young children in your school, those who are studying in class 5 and 4. Maybe you can share this with them, with those children, that they should not venture out on their own. Now the questions. My first question, why does the conductor call Wally Madam? The conductor called Wally Madam because she behaved like a grown-up woman. She declined his help and was very quick in her answers to the conductor's questions. This made the conductor call her Madam. Now next question is, why does Wally stand up on the street? What does she see now? Once again, the description of the scene. Wally wanted to look outside the bus. She found her view blocked by the canvas blind that covered the lower part of the window. In order to have a better view, she stood up on the seat and peered over the blind. What is a blind? Blind is a half curtain. Okay. She saw a canal, palm trees, grassland, mountains, green fields and the blue sky. Next question is, what does Wally tell the elderly man when he calls her a child? Wally replied that there was nobody in the bus who was a child. She told that she had paid her fare of 30 pies like others. In her heart of hearts, she was a little scared 
and wanted to tell herself and the world that she was a grown up person and that's her way of telling. Next question, why didn't Wally want to make friends with the elderly woman? Wally didn't want to make friends with the elderly woman. A, she didn't want to talk to anyone on the way to be safe and secondly she didn't want to be patronized by anyone. She did not like her looks also. She had big ear holes and was wearing ugly earrings. Apart from this she was chewing beetle and her mouth was also filled with beetle juice. So she didn't like the smell also. I have a question for you which we have to think now. Now that more people are noticing Willie, everybody in the bus knows that she is travelling alone. What do you think will happen? Imagine what will happen. Will this mean she is safe or will someone take advantage of the little girl travelling by herself? Such a thing can happen. We will find out our answers in the next section that is part 3. Happy reading. Thank you.